dan pastinya kerja menyelamat amat lebih sukar pada waktu malam berbanding pada waktu siang dan kita akan berbincang mengenai kesukarannya untuk men menjalankan operasi ini pada waktu malam dan apakah teknologi yang diperlukan untuk menjalankan operasi ini dan bersama saya di talian ialah Greg Waldron beliau merupakan pengarah pengurusan Flight Global yang sebuah website membawa berita industri penerbangan Hello Greg Hi Hi Greg thanks for joining us um, What we know now is that the Vietnamese, Malaysian and Chinese uh, have deployed their teams for the search and rescue. But I'm sure the rescue efforts are much more difficult at night. Can you tell us what are they up against? Um, well, it's a very difficult challenge to actually find objects floating in the ocean in the darkness like this. I mean, you'll need special radars and special equipment. And I'm not sure any of that equipment is on the scene right now. So at night, effectively, It's very difficult to use aircraft uh, for searching for this type of uh, wreckage if the wreckage is indeed there. Right, great. And what sort of technology is needed to carry out such an operation during nighttime? Can you give us a technological overview about what signals or what are we looking for right now? Well, ideally, you'd have a um, like a radar type system that would able to like. The military would have radars that can look for things like snorkels and objects on the surface of the water. Um, but these are technologies that are typically deployed more like, say, in you know, the Western Air Forces, maybe the Japanese, the Australians might have it. But I don't believe the Southeast Asian Air Forces, like, say, um, in the region would have that type of technology that could really scan the surface at night and make radar contacts on the surface of small objects. Okay, looking at the area uh, of the supposed uh, area where the plane went missing, which is below around south of Vietnam, and we'll, it's going to be such an arduous task ahead to search in this wide sea, but can you tell us approximately how big is this area and how long would it take to search an well, airplane? It's going, to take, it's going to take a long time. Now, I've understood, I heard a report somewhere that the air search will actually stop during the night and that the aircraft will be redeployed tomorrow. But we're looking at an area of several hundred, if not thousand square miles, because they have that point where they lost contact, but that's just the starting point. I mean, the ver aircraft, if it was a struggle for control, um, whatever happened, I mean, the aircraft could have veered wildly from that spot and ended up somewhere radically quite different. So we're talking hundreds of square miles that need to be covered. Um, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. This is going to be a very challenging and um, you know, stressful few days, I expect. Right. We have also announced that uh, we have extended the search area into this, the Straits of Malacca, which is on the west of the peninsula Malaysia. What are the possibilities of the plane actually going towards the direction? Well, that was not on an, its intended um, route. So. That is a bit of a surprise, but it is interesting to see them do that. And that goes back to what I was saying. Just because they lost radar contact at a certain point doesn't mean the aircraft is, was continued on a direct line or went down right there. It could have veered off into any other direction. It could have come across, back across the peninsula. It could have gone south. It could have gone north. It's, it's a very challenging um, situation. We just don't know um, what happened to the plane. It's, it's, a, it's a terribly uh, difficult challenge right now. All right, thank you Greg for joining us. Thank you so much. Baik itu saja tadi Greg Waldron, pengarah pengurusan Flight Global.